This podcast is one of several podcasts which is focused on the country of Turkey. Our presenter is Mr. Dan Johnson, a Minnesota teacher and someone who has visited Turkey many times since the 1970s. In this podcast, Dan will be our guide as we assume the role of a visitor to Turkey. You are listening to a podcast created by the Minnesota Alliance for Geographic Education. Our mission is to help you understand your world better through geography. This podcast is directed at students and teachers in grades 8 through 12 and and anyone interested in the country of Turkey. It addresses several Minnesota geography standards. On some devices, this podcast can display visuals, chapter controls, and clickable internet links. I'm Fred Kunze, a member of the Minnesota Alliance for Geographic Education. Hoş geldiniz. Um, that means welcome in Turkish. Tanıştı meza memnun oldum. I'm glad to meet you. Um, when I was young, I thought of Turkey as a land of magic carpet rides. But when I landed in Istanbul in 1972, I found a fascinating land of friendly people and rich with history. Turkey, pronounced Turkiye, if you are there, is an, has an extraordinary heritage, once the seat of the Greek, Roman, and Ottoman empires, located in the Middle East with more than 5,000 miles of coastland, The landscape includes mountains up to 10,000 feet that encircle the central Anatolian plateau. There have been searches for the legendary Noah's Ark on Mount Ararat in the east. Popular destinations are Ephesus, the 10th century BC ruins near Izmir on the west coast, Pamukkale, with its outdoor thermal pools, Cappadocia with the rock formations, and of course, resorts with beach activities. I once found an inexpensive bus leaving Istanbul at 11 p.m., crossing the mainland to arrive at an all-inclusive swimming resort on the Mediterranean Sea by morning. We stopped at a rest stop in the middle and I had some of the best kuzubudu, a tender, tasty lamb stew. Now let's focus on the largest city of Istanbul. Even though Ankara is the more modern capital of Turkey, the first impression is the majestic skyline with penetrating minarets surrounding the dynamic dome. Weaving through roads, which narrow as you enter the ancient part of Istanbul, once Constantinople, and before that Byzantium, busy Turks and tourists bustle to their next stop. The smell of spicy meats grilling, and we look out of the car at the shop displays of colorful handmade carpets and ceramic tiles. Istanbul, the only city in the world that is on two continents, Europe and Asia, with a body of water in between, starting from the Black Sea to the east. It's the Bosphorus Sea. And then on to the Sea of Marmara. And then the Aegean Sea in the west. There are about 14 million people in Istanbul out of 70 million in the country, probably more by now. We continue our ride and see men drinking tea and playing tavla, which is backgammon. You can try the local hammam or Turkish bath, visit historic Hagia Sophia, the Blue Mosque, the Grand Bazaar or Topkapi Palace, home of the Ottoman sultans for 400 years. You can hear them call to prayer from the mosque speakers. Hungry yet? Order meze or appetizers, an important part of the meal. Olives, bread, hummus, dolmas or stuffed vegetables. 
then lamb kebabs, rice, baklava, and of course Turkish coffee. Well, Dan, you've given us a general view of, uh, of your impressions or visitors' impressions of Turkey, but since you've visited here so many times, are there some special places, a special place that you can share with us that you have some good feelings about? Yes, I have spent most of my time on the Prince's Islands in the Sea of Marmara, between the European and Asian shores. Because Istanbul gets hot and hectic during summer, many families head for a place on the shore. One of those options is a ferry ride away to one of the four Adalar, or islands. The ferry boat takes about 30 to 60 minutes and arrives to a village atmosphere where the main transport is horse carriage or bicycle, no cars. Most apartments or homes are only occupied June through August. Most popular are the public beaches or private water clubs, and of course, the fish restaurants. Usually, the first ferry stop is Kunala. Most of the old wooden houses from the Ottoman period have been replaced. The center of Kunala is much more active than the next two islands, with a bigger variety of shops and cafes. The second inhabited island is Burgasada, formerly the Greek name Antigone, from one of Alexander the Great's generals. It's also on a hill, like most of the islands, a favorite with picnickers and hikers. This is where I live. The front water is lined with restaurants, but finding accommodations for overnight is difficult. One of my favorite diversions is a horse carriage or hike across Burgas to the Big Rock Beach, complete with the Kapazankia Gazino, specialty of underground meat roast, very tender and delicious. There is also a 9th century Byzantine church nearby. The third ferry stop is to Hebeliada site of the Turkish Naval Academy and one of the best island beaches of sand, not rocks. The last stop is Biyuk Ada. Biyuk means big and it has the most to offer. I have heard that this is where the Sultan came to cool off. It's fun to walk the streets to see the huge houses and gardens. I always visit the pastry shops. Karabia are my favorite cookies, sugar cookies with fruit and nuts inside. This is the best opportunity to take a grand tour by horse carriage. It takes about one and a half hours. Breathtaking scenery and impressive villas. You can stop to dine on Midia a deep-fried mussel with garlic yogurt sauce. As you can see, the summer months can be very enjoyable for the Turkish. Well, Dan, thanks for the, the visual road trip through Turkey. Um, in the end now, are there any general, it's always not safe to give generalizations, but any general impressions maybe of the economics, politics, geography of Turkey that our students can go away with? Well, despite the cultural beauty and historical significance, something that is so fascinating about Turkey is the contrast. One moment you are looking at a horse cart on the street and the next an exquisite sports car races by. Or perhaps a man slumped over with a four foot pile of rugs on his back and then you stay out until 4 a.m. at an exclusive disco. Regardless of historical influence, the Western democratic style constitution introduced by Kemal Ataturk in the 1920s has created change. The economy has had very good days, 
And politics even allowed a woman to become prime minister of this Muslim nation in the 1990s. It's hard, too much, hard to say too much about economics and politics because change is ongoing. You have been listening to a production of the Minnesota Alliance for Geographic Education. Background music is courtesy of Jim Hogue of Decora, Iowa. The Minnesota Alliance is a nonprofit group of educators and other parties who are interested in promoting an enhanced understanding of our world through improved geographic literacy.